so I saw Scream 4 today, and uh, I think it was in, I was in middle school when the very first Scream came out, and I was obsessed with it. I was obsessed with uh, all the Scream movies, and I became a huge Kevin Williamson fan. Um, um, the very first Scream, at that time especially, there was really, there was nothing like it. It was the first time, one of the, at least, I mean, at least in American horror films, one of the first times that um, there were two killers. And uh, which made it sort of unpredictable to figure out who the killer was. But if you watch it again, it's it's pretty almost obvious to see who the two killers are. Also, because it's a little dated, but the very first scream is definitely a classic. Um, another thing too that I, I remember like really liking about the very first scream when I was younger was usually like in horror films or just like even in like horror books. Anytime there's a red herring or someone is suspected of being the killer, they almost always end up not being the killer. Whereas Billy was being, he was like suspected throughout almost the entire movie as being the killer, and then he actually ended up being the killer. But it had a really good story. It was just an awesome movie. So when Scream 2 came out, um, it, like it's good, but um, the ending, when you figure out who the killers are, it's it really could have been anyone. Like there really is no hints or clues that I mean that it could have been Billy's mom, whether that was Billy's mom at all. It's just some random character in the movie, and pretty much every new character that's introduced in Scream 2 ends up getting killed. There are no new characters that are introduced in Scream 2 that end up in Scream 3. Um, unless you count Cotton Weary, but Cotton Weary, Cotton Weary uh, played by Lars Schreiber, really doesn't count because he was in the first Scream, like for a split second, and it is Lars Schreiber who's playing him when he's on the news and they're talking about uh, him killing um, Sidney's mother. Um, so anyways, I think the best thing about Scream 2 was just uh, Randy and Randy's uh, conversation with uh, David Arquette when they're in the cafe and they're talking about the rules. Other than that, like, all the way up until Randy dies, it's, mm, it's alright. Um, Scream 3 came out, and Scream th at least with Scream 2, it still took the franchise seriously. Like, with Scream 3, it just was a comedy. It didn't, it was just completely ridiculous. Um, but, I mean, I, I liked it, and, and like... The thing about Dewey's character too, like it was obvious that they were just trying, trying to find a way to throw him into the storyline because there's no way that he would be working on the stab set or have anything to do with them exploiting Sydney or her story. Um, and, and same thing with like like Scream Two. We just it's like Kevin was like, okay, how do we um, get Dewey in the story? Okay, well he hears about um, the killings and so he flies up to make sure that Sydney's okay. And like this whole thing with like Dewey being in love with Gail, like it, it seems like he's in love with Sydney. It's like he cares so much. I mean, Sydney's fault. It's Sydney's fault that his sister got killed in the first screen, which is never mentioned. It's mentioned once, I think, in Scream Three. Um, anyways, yeah, Scream Three was a little ridiculous. Um, and then the ending. It was the first one in the series where there was only one killer, and it was her brother. Same thing. I mean, there's no way that you could have saw that coming. Although it does like tie into the first, and it like sort of retroactively changes the storyline of the first one. He's like, but push Billy to kill her. Anyways, so yeah, so Sydney has some half brother, and, and the thing about these like killers too is like, okay, maybe in the second one it sort of made sense because it was like a revenge thing, but like, in Scream Three, he's just a whiny little pussy. You lived a life that I never got to live, and you get to know our slutty mother, and I didn't. And he's fucking crying about it, and then he wants to kill her. And, um, I don't know. Anyways, so I heard they were gonna do Scream Four many, many, many times, and I just never really thought that it would actually happen. And then when I found out they were doing it, and that all of the original characters were going to be returning, I was pretty stoked on it. Except, um, no Patrick Dempsey, which sort of makes sense, because, like, Scream 3 came out, like, what, 10, 11 years ago? It kind of makes sense that I don't think they could have, um, get Patrick Dempsey to do it at this point. Um, so, Scream 4, all the original characters are back in it, and, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to... If you haven't seen Scream 4 yet, then you should probably stop watching this video right now because I'm going to talk about uh, the ending. Out of all the sequels, this was probably my favorite sequel, um, except like the movie. The movie was so awesome all the way up until like, about the last 10-15 minutes of the movie, and then it's just ridiculous, like way, 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 way far-fetched and. I, I guess it was, like, cool that it's not ridiculous. Like, I love horror movies with really ridiculous endings, but this was... Like, it was the most... Like, in comparison to Scream 3, Scream 4 is more of a, a, a serious entry in the series, although it's still 
probably a comedy first. And what's up with, uh, not Gil, but Courtney Cox, like, does she, like, get a facelift or tons of Botox? She looks pretty scary, um, in Scream 4. So anyways, uh, Sydney is back, and, um, she's just being tortured again and again. Like, I don't, I don't know when she's going to get a break. Um, but anyways, the thing that is really annoying, too, about Scream 4 is I heard they're like setting up for a new franchise or a new trilogy. What, with this ending, that's like they didn't leave anything open for any of the new characters to return. They killed every single one of the new characters except for like one of them. Every single new person in that movie, every red herring that was introduced in Scream Four, they they're all killed, all of them. Um. I okay, and it was cool that it went back to the two killer formula, but I guessed one of the killers. I had, the way I thought the movie was going to end was much better in my opinion than the movie actually ended. Um, I just, I didn't really buy the whole, again, another whiny, irrational uh, killer. She wants to be famous and that's worth killing her mother, killing all of her friends, and I just, um, I don't know, what, what's up with Sydney's family anyway? Like, her brother tries killing her in Scream 3, and then her little cousin tries killing her in Scream 4. Uh, I'll, I'll admit, I didn't see that coming. I mean, it might as well have been Sydney as the killer. It would have made just as much sense. Just being, it would have made more sense, actually, her being pissed off that uh, they keep exploiting her, and that, that exploiting everything that happened to her, and making money off of it. I mean, even Woodsboro itself just is basically celebrating all of these, like, murders and stuff. Um, yeah, it's a little, little, little morbid, a little fucked up, but, um, anyways, so, yeah, it's, her little cousin ends up being the killer, and she, like, uh, manipulates, um, there's, there's always that, like, there's Mickey, the freaking Tarantino film student from Scream 2, who gets manipulated by Billy's mother, and Stan, uh, Stu, who gets manipulated by Billy in Scream 1, and now Rory Culkin's character is manipulated by, uh, Emma Roberts' character, and it just, it would have been a lot better if they would have stuck with the whole remake thing, if, if, it would have been either the two film geeks, or e even better if it actually was her boyfriend and one of the film geeks, and they're pulling the whole Stu Billy thing, and they really are like obsessed with horror films, and they're trying to remake it and by, you know, doing this to um, uh, Sydney's little cousin. But it ended up actually being Sydney's little cousin, and she was doing it to to be famous, and the whole ending. I mean, it was it was funny, and it was cool, I guess, but just really, really extremely far-fetched and ridiculous, and I guess it's Scream 4, and at this point, um, any plotline would be pretty far-fetched, but like I said, other than every single person being killed, because there was lots of really cool new characters um, that were introduced in Scream 4, and I was really hoping that um, it was going to open up to like a new trilogy, like, it would have been cool if... Emma Roberts' character was not the killer, and Sydney actually does get killed, and the franchise continued with her, and like maybe like one of her two friends survived, or or even if they kept the whole idea of Emma Roberts actually being the killer, what I thought would have been also really cool is if Sydney's character really did die in the end, and Emma Roberts gets away with it, and then the next one is about her moving on, but then these other like psycho killers like they don't realize that she actually is the killer, and so they're like trying to be like copycat killers or whatever they're trying to get their 15 minutes of fame by um, being killers and wanting to get caught, the whole Scream 2 thing, anyways, and so they don't realize that they're actually trying to kill a killer, or, uh, I don't know, anyways, there's just so many different things they could have done with it, but that pretty much could end it, like, they could never make a Scream 5 or Scream 6, and that would just be fine, like, the series would pretty much uh, just be able to close up and be finished with, um, yeah, so... Still, like I said, out of all the sequels, Scream 4 is probably my favorite sequel. Um, I like it better than Scream 2 and 3, but it was a little disappointing when I got to the end, but uh, everything leading up to it was awesome. So. Anyways, that's it.